This video is part one in a series where I'll try to create my own electronic message display board. As usual for a project of mine, I'll be sort of bumbling through all this in my own way and at my own pace, learning as I go and aware of, but not necessarily adhering to, best practice and common wisdom. I like it better that way. Let's talk a bit of theory about digital displays. This is a seven segment LED display. If you exist, you've seen these. LED, because it's made from these things, light emitting diodes. Seven segment, because well, it has seven of these rectangular or oblong LED segments, each of which can be independently illuminated and in various combinations can be made to represent the digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. There's also a decimal point on this one. So actually eight LEDs in total, but it's still called a seven segment display. Put several of them together and you can display longer numbers or information like the time or date. Here's a clock on my cooker that uses seven segment LEDs. Here's a timer that uses the same concept but using liquid crystal. So this is an LCD. Here's a seven segment vacuum fluorescent display. And they've been implemented in pretty much every display technology you can think of. Even just the pixels on your computer or phone screen. The computer for the Apollo mission to the moon had electroluminescent seven segment displays. And here's one that's mechanical. It has moving parts for each segment. Why seven segments? Well, that turns out to be the minimum number of pieces if you want to display all 10 different numerals and if you want them to be reasonably readable and fairly consistent in height. There have been creative efforts to represent all 10 digits using fewer segments, but they always involve greater levels of compromise than this, and it ends up making the display look a bit weird, at least for some numerals. If you want to go down that particular rabbit hole, I will link you to some excellent and interesting videos, which explore it in greater depth. Even the seven segment display has some compromises of its own. The digit one isn't centered in the space, so there's a big gap to the left of it. And some of the other numbers like four and seven seem a bit awkward compared to their written forms. Many implementations of seven segment displays have slanted essentially italic pieces to make them look a bit nicer and a bit more readable. And these things are so ubiquitous that we've all just learned to accept them as readable numbers. But okay, what if you want to display more than just numbers? Well, let's try that on a seven segment display. Capital A is okay, because lowercase a would probably have to be this, which just looks weird. We can't have capital B, because that's the same as 8. So we could have this. We have two different options for C. D has no choice but to be lowercase, because that other thing's just a zero. Capital E is okay. If we try to make a lowercase e, it's just weird. F is fine. Lowercase g is a problem, because that thing's just a 9. So I suppose we'd have to do this. H is fine, upper or lowercase, but I is difficult. There's not really any way to differentiate the letter I from the number one. I mean, I suppose you could put it over the other side, but that's just different without being usefully different. J is fine, but now we get to K. And there's just no way to do it, because this is an H, and so is this. I think the closest you can get to a K is probably this, which honestly I just think is horrible. L is okay, but M is completely impossible. There just isn't enough horizontal resolution. And you can't make it out of two digits because they're spaced apart by design. So seven segment displays are good for numbers, but not good for all of the letters. Okay if you just want to display decimals or hexadecimal, but no good if you want to write words in a language that uses the whole of the Latin alphabet. One way to solve this is to use a matrix of LEDs. Here's one that's an 8 by 8 square, and this provides a lot more flexibility. We can display nice, sort of rounded characters. All of the upper and lowercase letters are possible. Letter I and number 1 can even be more or less in the middle of the space and distinct from each other. Punctuation and other characters are possible, as well as fun little icons and graphics. But this flexibility comes at a cost. Instead of having just seven LEDs for each character, we now have 64 of them. Surely there's some sort of compromise or middle ground. Well, there is, and here it is, the 16 segment display. This is what you would get if you took the seven segment display and added diagonals, extra verticals, and then split the horizontals in two. This one also has a place for a decimal point, but it's not implemented in this device. I don't think there's even an LED in there. Certainly there's no pin to light it up. It's probably just there because the same mold was used to make the plastics for a different unit that did have a decimal point. Anyway, with this, we can display quite nice looking versions of all of the numbers and uppercase letters and versions of the lowercase too. We have choices that can differentiate between say an S and a five, a Z and a two, or an O and a zero, which wasn't possible using only seven segments. And we even have style options on how to construct certain letters and numbers, including E, M, Y, and the numbers 3 and 8. So I'll be using these 16 segment displays to build my signboard. Taking a look at the back of the display element, there are 18 connection pins. If there are 16 LEDs there, and each LED needs two wires, 
You might think there would be 32 pins, but internally one of the legs of each LED is wired to a common connector, in this case the cathode. So we can just connect that to ground and then connect one or more of the other pins to a supply and it will light up the relevant LEDs. For some reason this device has two pins that are common ground, so those two plus 16, one for each LED, makes up the 18 pins. There is a bit of weirdness about the arrangement of the pins versus the LEDs they represent. It's just a bit jumbled up, probably just to simplify the way the internal wiring is laid out. But it doesn't matter as long as it's consistent. We can just find the pins we want to connect the segments we want to illuminate. Look, I've made the letter M. By the way, I'm connecting the inputs using little resistors. If I didn't do that, the LEDs would just get too much current and burn themselves out. So great, we've plugged in a load of wires and resistors to make a single letter. It's not very useful if we want a display that will show whole words, not just one letter. So we will need to drive these inputs from a computer or something. But now we hit another problem. There are 16 inputs for each display element, and we will need quite a few elements to make a whole sign. Even if it only had 10 digits, that's still 160 data lines to control. Most microcontrollers and computers and other control circuit things simply don't have anything like that capacity. One way to solve that problem is multiplexing. Let's use that 8x8 matrix as an example. Instead of having 64 data lines, one for each LED, we could just have one for each row and one for each column. So only 16 data lines, and then turn on any pair of data lines to illuminate any dot, and then a different pair for the next dot, and so on. That does mean the dots are all flashing on and off, but if you do it really fast, the human eye can't perceive the flicker and it just looks like they're all on at the same time. That sort of display can be tricky on camera though. The clock on my cooker uses multiplexing for its seven segment LEDs. It looks completely steady to my eyes when I stand here in the kitchen, but on camera the flashing of the LEDs is not in sync with the camera shutter and the video frame rate, and it's a flickery mess. I've got the video paused at the moment. If you have sensitivity to flashing or strobing lights, you might want to close your eyes now just for a moment while I unpause the video. See what I mean? Okay, you can open your eyes again now. Now, I want my display board to look okay on camera, so I'm not going to multiplex my LEDs, at least not by that method. I'm going to use these shift registers. Shift registers work like this. You've got eight things you want to control and you want some of them switched on and others switched off in a specific pattern that needs to change whenever you like. And so instead of trying to switch on and off all eight things at once, which would require eight outputs from the controller, you specify the state of each item one at a time, like a list, using just one output to tell the shift register about each output in turn. Then you tell the shift register to act on all eight results at once, which it does. Well, you can get on with something else basically delegating the job of output. This is, by the way, just called serial communication. No particular protocol, this is just a simple serial conversation. And another name for shift registers is a serial to parallel converter. It's a little bit more complex because you also need a clock signal to make it obvious when there are things like three or four or five zeros in a row. And you need a control line to tell the shift register you're finished and then it's time to display the data. And maybe another line to reset everything. But that's still only three, maybe four lines out of your controller for controlling eight different things. And shift registers have a neat overflow feature. Imagine you're pushing marbles into a tube that can only hold eight marbles. When you push in the ninth marble, the first one pops out of the tube at the other end. And shift register ICs have a pin that works exactly like that. And by connecting that output overflow to the input of another shift register chip, you can make a chain of practically any length you like, with only the same three or four inputs, regardless of the length of the chain. And that's what I'm going to do now for this display. I'll need two of these 8-bit shift registers for my 16-segment display because it requires 16 inputs, 2 times 8. So let's wire that up. The common cathodes of the LED display go to ground. A total of 16 output pins from the two shift registers go via current limiting resistors to the individual anode inputs of the 16-segment display. It's a shame you can't just use one resistor on the common cathode, but if you do, the brightness of the LEDs will vary depending on how many segments are lit. The shift registers each get their own 5 volt and ground connections. The output of the first register goes to the input of the second. Then I need to create three inputs, which I'll do for now using these three momentary buttons or switches. Each switch is connected to the 5 volt line, then the other side of the switches goes to the input, the input clock and the latch. We'll ignore the reset for now. Each of these inputs on the chips needs a pull down resistor. We're dealing with digital inputs here, which need to be unambiguously low or high, 0 or 1, on or off. And whilst connecting an input to 5 volts will definitely set it to the high state, simply removing that 5 volt connection isn't guaranteed to make it immediately go back to the low state. So a high value resistor is connected from the pin to ground, and that bleeds off any floating charge and will set it back to zero. But because only a small current can flow through the resistor, its connection to ground will be overwhelmed by the 5 volt input when the button's pressed. 
Some integrated circuits have internal pull-down or pull-up resistors, but these shift registers don't, so I just have to add those myself. The last thing to do is connect the clock and latch lines from the first shift register to the second, that way they'll all march to the same beat, and the two 8-bit registers will function like one 16-bit register. Now let's give it a test, and this is where it all went sort of wrong. I could clearly input data into the thing, but the results are really erratic, and the reason for that I think is these little momentary buttons don't just switch cleanly on or off, they bounce. That is literally the two conducting pieces inside the switch when they come together to make contact, physically strike each other, bounce apart a bit, contact again, bounce again, and so on, until they finally settle down and stay in contact. All of that happens in a fraction of a second, but if they're connected to a thing that wants a clean digital square wave input, it appears to that thing like it's a sequence of multiple signals instead of just one. And because of the somewhat random arrangement of the segments, it's hard to see what's actually going on. So for now, I'll dispense with this 16 segment display and just replace it with a neat row of 16 discrete LEDs. And here it's easier to see what happens when I try to toggle in some data using those buttons. In some cases, three or four bits are being pushed into the thing for one press. This isn't going to be a problem for the final product I'm aiming to make because it will be driven by a microcontroller and I didn't intend to introduce that part to the project just yet. So I did try a couple of different momentary switches but none of these were any good. So rather than going to all of the trouble of debouncing these switches I'm going to jump ahead a bit in the project plan and use an Arduino compatible board to drive it all. I have very little experience programming in the language these things use which is a variant of C++ but fortunately for me there's a wealth of example code online for pretty much anything you can think of. So initially I just need to paste in some code that will do the most rudimentary version of what I want and cobble together a better version as I begin to pick up the language. My early code will be pretty awful, so just shield your eyes if that hurts your soul. Anyway, after a bit of tinkering, I managed to get it to shift data through the whole row of LEDs, which, being that there are 16 of them, represent two whole bytes of output from the Arduino. Here it is counting in binary in the second byte, the first byte being all zeros. And here it is just lighting one LED at a time. Now I've got it doing that, I think we can get that 16 segment display back in place. So here it is lighting the 16 segment display, one segment at a time, in strict sequence of the pin order. And as you can see, there's only a sort of loose order to the segments, but that doesn't matter as long as we know what that order is. So I recorded that sequence, made myself a simple map to denote which bit of the two bytes lights which segment, and from here it should be possible to choose which segments I want to light up, add up their bit values, and then output those values to get the pattern I want. And here it is, again, the letter M. Somewhat on a roll now, I wrote a piece of awful spaghetti code, don't judge, to output a sequence of bytes to make an actual message. And here's that, which of course is the thing I used to generate the intro that you saw at the start of this video. And of course, some of you might have figured out that this is my little tribute to Fran Blanche, whose enthusiasm for illuminated displays has played no small part in my own excitement to get going on a project like this. So, all of this gubbins is what makes the Arduino output a bit sequence to the shift registers and makes the shift registers display it on the 16 segment display. If I had a duplicate of this setup, I could chain the overflow from one of them into the input of the next, and as each new letter was pushed in, it would displace the previous letter to the other one. And we'd be able to display two letters at a time, or any number of letters if we had the correct number of duplicates of this setup. But it's a bit of a mess, isn't it? Fortunately, 90% of that mess is just wires, and most of that is because of the way breadboards work. So in the next episode of this little series, I'll take what I've learned from this messy prototype and implement it in a less messy prototype. Ideally one that I can make multiple copies of with relative ease, because there are going to be quite a few of them. I found these 16 segment displays on sale as surplus really cheap, so I bought 100 of them. Not sure I'll use all 100 in my message board, but that was the quantity I had to buy to get these for just 16 pence each. Anyway, for now that's all, and it might be a little while before I finish part two, because while I was trying to buy the shift registers in bulk, I encountered a scam, which I might talk about in a different video. Meanwhile, if you're still hungry for more lovely LED and display content while you're waiting for me to make part two, maybe check out Fran's channel. Link in the description and card. I hope you enjoy it. So I hope this has been interesting. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.